Um, with the summer coming around and with the 90 degree days we've had and then also the, the working dogs, the handlers that are out in the field a lot with these working dogs, um, heat stroke is definitely a concern. Um, some dogs tolerate the heat better than others and certain dogs can acclimate uh, to the heat. If they've been training throughout the spring, they become uh, accustomed to the hotter temperatures. They can have a body temperature sometimes of some of these working dogs about 105, 106 and have no adverse effects. That's the rare situation. Most of these pets, especially the ones that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, once we reach a temperature of 105 degrees, we're really at risk for heat stroke. And so anything 106 greater then that we really are, are in some pretty uh, bad situations. So it often occurs in summer months, but it also can occur in the winter. Um, that's typically with a really severely working dogs, but most of these are in the summer, higher humidity, et cetera. The way the dogs dissipate their heat typically is by panting, so they can vac heat off of them. If they're unable to do that because of the high humidity, if they're not cooling down uh, because they're not, they're not wet, so they're not conveying heat off of them, then they can go into heat stroke. I always say that I've never seen a cat that has heat stroke because they're all smart enough to go to the shade. Dogs aren't smart enough to do that. My labs will not go to the shade at all. So um, frequently occurs in pets that are left inside cars as well, just like in people and in infants, that if you're in a car, that heat and that inside that vehicle is so much higher than the outdoors ambient temperature. 75 degrees outside, you can get 90 uh, or more degrees inside the vehicle. So you really, um, even though it's kind of nice to take your dogs for a ride every once in a while, you don't want to leave them in the car when you go somewhere. Um, symptoms ex uh, can include excessive panting, weakness, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy. Um, it's oftentimes difficult to, to assess these patients, but sometimes they just aren't acting right. They're just not of the right mental, I mean, they are always sharp on commands. They're always really good, and now they're not listening to a thing you say. They kind of want to go off and do their own thing. Those types of mental changes may want to clue you in uh, that your pet could be uh, suffering from heat stroke. If you suspect heat stroke, then you want to take the rectal temperature. Um, it's very good to have that as part of your first aid kit. Get the digital thermometers and uh, spend the extra dollar or two to get the quick read thermometers. It's so much nicer to take a dog's temperature in about 10 seconds rather than a minute. You'll get, it, <laughs> you'll get the temperature a lot more often that way. So, um, and then the other thing is you don't ever want to use the glass thermometers. We used them all the time whenever I started uh, as a veterinary technician, but uh, you can imagine the dangers associated with those. Um, so if the temperature is greater than 105, uh, after you take the thermometer, the rectal temperature, we want to start some type of cooling measures. Used to what they would do is they'd take the dog, they'd dunk them in an ice bath, and that's great because it cools them off very fast. But that rapid change from being hot to cold really can start some severe systemic problems and really can be much worse for the dog. Um, and so what we want to do is just use lukewarm water. So any type of water, even if it's, you know, you're out and it's a pond or a lake, that's perfect. That, that type of water to help get them wet and to help cool them off as well. The other thing is offer them something to drink. If they will drink, then cooling them down at the core is great. You can use, for sure, you can use ice water in that type of scenario. But trying to cool them from the core is, is excellent. Um, but lukewarm water baths and then offer cool water to drink. Um, any patient that has suffered from heat stroke, even if they seem to be doing pretty good, should be checked by a veterinarian. Heat stroke on the outside may not look too bad sometimes, but it causes a lot of internal damage. If nothing else, just to be safe, to have an examination, maybe to have some blood work done, to look at some parameters to be sure that internal injury hasn't occurred or there's no uh, in internal injury maybe that, that will come down later down the road.